We all struggle to balance our lives, fitting in our hobbies and our passions with our work-life commitments. Not all of us can freely shape our lives. Some of us need the courage to do so. Hey, Ali. Hey, Hello. Hey. Come on in, mate. Cheers. My name is Oliver Murphy Kurth, and I'm here today to interview Dave McNamara subcontractor who, against all odds, has managed to keep his passion alive. So mate, tell us a bit about your passion and how you got into it. Well, I guess it all started when um, I got a midget Farrelly foamy from my parents when I was about nine years old. Yeah. And went from there, yeah. And uh, always loved the water, always loved surfing. First board I made was when I was about 23 and I was actually a windsurfer. The, when I was into you know, the windsurfing, so. So it was a windsurfing board? Yep. Okay. So, yeah, that's where I got started into making things and just went from there. How do you juggle your work life commitments with shaping? You find time to do it. So, you always find time to do things you love to do. Tell us how your dad's influenced you and your passion for, for surfing. Well he got me into surfing when I was around about five by making my first surfboard and kind of from there he's um, made, encouraged me to keep on going with it by making me more boards and getting me involved. And how many boards do you reckon he makes, he's made for you? Easily over, over a handful. What do you think makes your dad so good at what he does and drives him to continue doing what he does? Well, he's just a perfectionist and he has to do hands-on stuff so he has to build and I think he's found his passion in making surfboard so he's he's kept at it. Tom is a big influence in your life and um, your passion for shaping. Uh, tell me how he's influenced you and how you've inf influenced him. I think his influence is that he loves surfing so much and he lives for it. And his knowledge that he's, he's gained over the last couple of years about boards and board shapes. For his age he's pretty switched on for that and I think he reads too many surf magazines. I think too much time on the internet, but has some very, really, really good ideas. Just love putting them from ideas into material. So over the past 35 years, what's um, been the biggest struggles or hardships that's almost stopped you from continuing your passion? Having the shop and when retail was really flat, that was the hardest time just to keep, keep it going, paying for the rent for the shop and yeah, we just packed up and walked out. So gave it away for a little while and then but I had some good loyal clients and customers that kept coming back. What's your advice for uh, anyone out there who's given up on their passion? I think you've got to set yourself some realistic goals um, rather than just dreaming it's, and put some plans down on paper um, and make sure they're achievable. Um, in those days did I ever want to be Billabong or Ripco or anything like that, I just wanted to make surfboards and, and see people out in the water more than anything yeah. rather than make a million dollars because I definitely don't make a million dollars. As I said, set realistic goals. If it fails, go back to find out where it failed and try to find different ways to get over that step. But yeah, if you're passionate enough, you'll get there. This isn't really work to me, this is passion and a love for doing something. So um, it's not a chore or a task at any time. It's actually a relaxation, so it's not hard at all. 